All right, what is going on guys and welcome back to another video. As I said last week, I'm gonna try to implement a few more of these like just recorded at home in the room, kind of like discussions or topics or whatever you wanna call them, reactions, just because it's kind of helping supplement uh, the two videos a week. So today I decided to bring Gian in on this because I hate recording these in the house ones by myself and I like having somebody there to do these with. So I might be bringing in uh, Gian or other people for like discussions or for like reaction videos and stuff. So. We have Gion today. Gion's Tundra. What's up? Who's getting his rear end long travel this week, by the way? Hopefully, <sighs> hopefully. Okay. So like I explained to you this week, I saw a reel from this Overland guy that I've seen a few times on my Explore page who was, it's just a video of him like working on his truck or whatever it is he's doing. And he did a voiceover on it saying like, essentially, I didn't save it or send it to anybody, so I can't bring it back up for this video. But he was essentially saying like, uh, we should be inclusive of everybody who wants to get into off-roading. We shouldn't gate gatekeep trails or like uh like gatekeep like tips or tricks or uh anything like essentially just being all inclusive to everybody who wants to get into off-roading and everybody who does do off-roading and stuff like that. And as I expressed to you, like as soon as I saw that, I was like, it it rubbed me the wrong way a little. Like I I I don't think that's true. I, we're just gonna start there. I don't mm -hmm. think that's true. I definitely think we should not be as inclusive as he made it sound in his reel. But, like, can you elaborate on it a little bit? Like, Yeah, so, like I said, I was thinking about this all day today because I knew we were filming this video, but <laughs> it was like... I definitely think there are certain people in off-roading that shouldn't be in off-roading just because of various reasons. One, they just have no common sense. You know, they don't belong in the desert because they have no common sense. Like, they'll be ripping through campsites or ripping past camps at stupid speeds it's like you have a fully built we'll say like razor like you have a fully built side by side go out in the desert do it so don't like be ripping down a fire road thing you're badass yeah. uh, potentially like you know there's kids that ride their pit bikes that are learning to ride out there yeah. so and then there's other people that just aren't respectful of the desert in the sense like um i don't think you're on that new year's trip with us like two years ago when we all met but like there was like half of the group it was like People that came with Andres, I don't think he's friends with them anymore, so it's oh, yeah. fine talking about it right now. <laughs> but like they, like they left like a day or two before everybody else, and they left literally just like shit loads of trash yeah. all over. Like we were still there, so like mm -hmm. there's like dumped over food. There's like just trash everywhere. We literally spent like a good twenty minutes with like five people just picking up all the shit they left. <laughs> so it's like. Again, this was an overland guy that was doing it, so it might be a little different than what we do. Like, we're more desert and stuff. Yeah. And, like, every example I just gave was desert. So mm -hmm. maybe with the overland community, you guys want to be all-inclusive, go for it. But, like, bringing it back to, like, desert stuff. And I sh I'm, sur I'm sure those examples could kind of carry over into overlanding, too, where it's, like, people are just stupid as shit on the trails. They're not respectful of the trails. And th I just don't think that everybody needs to be included in this. We yeah. don't have to be yeah. accepting of everybody. Yeah. I, I definitely think there's ways that we can reform it. Like, one, like one example I thought of when you were talking is, uh, like, King of the Hammers. I saw a lot of reels of, like, Chocolate Thunder, like, the aftermath of all of it. Yeah. And I think, like, the people that host it, I don't know, can maybe set up, like, as simple as trash cans around, like, Chocolate Thunder. Because, I mean, there was a ton of trash left around, which I think is unacceptable. But there's always ways to stop certain things. But, yeah, I mean, I agree with you on that on your standpoint i think when it comes to like the chocolate thunder kind of stuff it's it's from stuff i've seen and i'm sure it's not 100 percent the case but it's always the people that aren't like really into off-road that are yeah. ones that are ruining you know it's like the people that are really into off-road like chocolate thunder is a big event that you want to bring even people that don't off-road out with you yeah. just to party and have a good time mm -hmm. so i feel like it's those people that get brought out by the actual off-roaders that are the ones like doing that kind of stuff that you're talking about mm -hmm. which i think goes back to the main topic at hand of like not everybody should be so accepted when it comes to off-roading you know yeah. and to switch up gears a little bit and to like maybe point out like a certain <laughs> like demographic of off-roaders but like you were saying you're like i could go off about side-by-sides and yeah. razor people you know mm -hmm. like i think that's another example of why we shouldn't be so accepting because i've had this talk with other people too where it's like razors and can-ams are so easily accessible and so easy to buy for like how wild they are power wise and suspension wise mm -hmm. so literally just anybody if you're not into off-roading could just go to 
uh, what's like Burt's Mega Mall or something and buy one and then just go out in the desert with no knowledge of how to off-road or like the common sense of it and just rip around with way too much power and way too much suspension, you know? Mm. You know what's funny is I actually saw a TikTok today. It's, this guy has like this whole lot of cannons. You can rent them for 250 bucks a day. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, even if, like just how you said, they're really accessible, you don't even have to buy them. You can just rent one for the day and just go mess around in the desert. I think there's... There's just something about somebody who had to, like, build an off-road vehicle that kind of, like, slows down the process of getting you into the desert so you can kind of, like, learn all that stuff Mm -hmm. that then makes you accepted or, like, acceptable in the off-road community, if that makes sense, you know? Yeah. Like, you look at somebody who just goes to the store and buys a Can-Am and goes out versus somebody that took, like, a year or two building their truck and, like, easing into the desert, you know? Yeah. I think you see two different, like, personalities Mm -hmm. in that. Not only the trash, uh, to continue on the side-by-sides, it's uh, also the trails. I mean, I feel like I can't even go to like jo- places like Johnson Valley or Barstow without going down a wash and my truck's just like twerking left and right on these razor chops and you know, back off my bolts. But um, I think that there should be, like, kind of like you said, like specific groups or like maybe at certain events that hold different kind of vehicles that i don't know like play around with the desert more i don't know i feel like like i said i'm sitting on a fence a little with it all so i think it comes down to not the fact that we shouldn't accept everybody and we shouldn't gatekeep certain things from everybody but i think it's more so like personality or like specific people Mm -hmm. you know because like We've obviously met those people where it's like, you don't belong in the desert. Yeah, yeah. But it's not to say that they couldn't have changed or been different. You know, like, it, it was the personality of the person, not just they weren't into off-roading at one point. You know, because there's people like me. I was never, I'm like the, the, what is it, the black sheep of the family. Where it's like, nobody in my family was into off-roading. I never grew up going to the desert. Mm-hmm. None of that stuff. I got into it maybe the age of 17. Like, yeah, my, my senior year of high school. Yeah. So it's like, there's people that can learn and get into it and like be accepted into it from like uh like scratch you know never having been in the desert not growing up that way but i think it comes down to like the personality of the person and kind of like how they how they come into the desert you know yeah so you're saying that we should like try to change their personality or how would you want how would you go about that not saying that there's anything that could be done on the back and it's more so just like how the guy said we should be inclusive of everybody. We shouldn't gatekeep. Like, yeah, that's true up to an extent, you know? Like, mm-hmm. give everybody a chance to come in. If you see that they're, like, a, a total <laughs> kid, then it's like, okay, maybe, like, then we won't be accepting of them, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, like I said with the with the King of Hammers two years ago, like, I didn't know any of those people going into the desert, like Andres's old friend group, whoever they were. So I gave them the benefit of the doubt that they were cool and everything, that they could have a chill time in the desert, and then they literally just... They got drunk, they went on a night run, got stuck for a few hours. I don't know if that was his friend group or somebody else that was there, but, like, examples, you know? Yeah. yeah. They got drunk, went on a night run, uh, got stuck. They were stuck out there for hours, had to pull more people out of our camp to go help them for those hours on New Year's night, and then leave trash all over our camp and then dip on us and don't even pick up their own shit, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't even know if they brought like anything to the camp like firewood i don't know if they offered us drinks <laughs> yeah. i don't know if they offered us food like they just showed up trashed and dipped so it's like how would you stop those kind of people from getting in the desert though because <sighs> I mean, that i think the desert is one of the hardest places to keep people out of just because it's i mean what's dirt and rocks and cactuses out there cacti i think it's a different conversation than the whole like are we accepting off the bat and like being inclusive but I don't think there's any way to keep people out of the desert. I think it's more so just like with certain situations we've seen lately, how I said you can make a bad name for yourself in the industry and in the community. Like it's a really small community. So I think if you're doing that kind of stuff, like with one group, tarnish your name, they don't want to hang out with you anymore. Then you go to another group, keep doing the same thing. They don't want you anymore. Eventually you're going to run out of people, (laughs) you know? Yeah. Like just in this past, what, three, four months alone, we've seen like all ends of like the middle point of all ends of the community. You know, it's like, we knew all these people on the outside. Now we've met the middle point. And it's like everybody now knows each other. Yeah. And that's only been in the past three months for us too. So it's mm-hmm. like, that's probably what would keep them out is everybody just kind of holding them accountable or not fucking with them if they ruin stuff, you know? Yeah. But I don't know if there's, a, like you said, it's hard to keep people out of the desert. Yeah, because like, 
I think King, like, I, I don't keep going back to King of the Hammers, but that's all, that's like all I can think of when I think of this conversation is, uh, it's like with social media, it's like such like a blown up thing. It does, yeah. It's like, it's almost like uh like super cross, like people that don't even know about dirt bikes are like starting to go there, starting to like give it a bad reputation. <clears throat> it's like a whole different thing now. Um, I think it's just hard. I think the events are just getting too big. I think the community is starting to expand a little too much to where people that like don't have any idea want to like get a taste of it or something or like experience it for themselves yeah definitely and i think that's kind of where my like distaste for that reel that i saw kind of came from because like i said it is a really small community which is not oh that's the other point i wanted to touch on thanks no so it's like the community's so small to where like you have sort of like the die hard like really cool down to earth people doing it you know and like like i said if people ruin their name they kind of vanish and nobody really talks to them anymore and they're not a problem but I think if we're so inclusive and so accepting and don't gatekeep to the extent that like the community is right now, like we're not really gatekeeping, but we're not like publicizing it to everybody, mm-hmm. you know, like come join us, everybody get in on this. Cause if we do that, then it turns into like the car scene, you know, where you have like diehard, like car people that are down for it. And then you got like the a-holes that are swinging in intersections, yeah. like thinking they're hard shit. Cause they went out, bought a scat pack, kind of like, you know, you buy a side by side. It's like, way too much performance for somebody to just go out and buy. <laughs> yeah. And now they're in an intersection swinging it, thinking they're doing hot shit when they could do like half a donut and then spin out yeah. and lose control. It's like, you know, what's crazy is that I think the pre runner community is expanding so much. It's, I've seen a couple of pre-runners in those takeovers, like joining, I think they're starting to combine a little bit. There's <laughs> one guy, he's a, he's more of a JDM style person, but he's got like, fuck you money. It's whatever he does, whatever he wants. And, uh, when picked up like a built ranger i'm pretty sure it's beamed <laughs> he's just swinging it around town and it's pretty the comment section was definitely interesting yeah so that's that that was like the main thread of like why i wouldn't want to be so inclusive and so accepting of everybody because it could easily turn into that you know mm-hmm. like i don't know i can't think of any examples so far like like you said maybe like super cross game hammers where you're starting to see that kind of trickle in but it's not an event that could ruin the name you know like what can you really do at super cross that affects all of us nothing you know yeah you get in a drunk fight that doesn't <laughs> affect the community yeah. though that's just that one person mm-hmm. but yeah no it's i haven't seen that sort of trickle in yet where it's like there's outside people coming in and ruining it i guess you could kind of say how they're starting to close down like certain dune areas i don't yeah. know if that's due to trash and outside people coming in or if it's just land mm-hmm. management trying to take back parts of california but mm-hmm. i think it, i think it does a little bit with both yeah because um where we where we parked or camped in johnson valley the guy doesn't allow anyone to camp on his ground and that's like the whole right side of johnson valley mm. he can, he came in uh one morning he came and read off my plate read off my address my name and he was like if I, like, see, like, one ounce of trash here, I'm going to find you guys. He's, like, since you guys are already, like, set up, I won't make you leave. But this is, like, a one-time thing with me. And I think it's literally just because he doesn't want his, like, his land. Was that outside room. of Hammertown? Yeah. Okay. Um, Yeah, he was the guy who came and, like, said. Hey, yo. Like, oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> we got, we're going to get demonetized. <laughs> but, yeah, like, people uh, are, like, like spilling gear oil, like brake fluids all over the dirt. It kind of just messes everything up. So he said, he told me that like he just wants everyone off of it, but it's hard, like it's hard to get everyone out of there. But yeah. I think it just has to do with like the fact of people leaving their stuff there and just disrespecting what's his. I don't know if, if you have anything else to talk about on this topic, go for it. But that's just kind of where I'm at with the whole distaste for that guy's real where it's like we should stop gatekeeping and be more accepting of everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, that's kind of why I didn't really resonate with that reel and wasn't like agreeing with it because it's like i like what we have right now i don't want it to blow up like the community's small enough right now to where you can know everybody even like the big name people you know like like i said these past three months have been wild for us yeah. so it's like i don't want it to blow up one for the reason like it gets so big nobody really knows each other you can't hold each other accountable two i don't want other people ruining it and three it's just there's certain people i just don't want to I just don't want out there, you know, certain personality types, certain people, I just don't want out there ruining it mm-hmm. for me personally, not just like everybody in the community and the land and government getting involved and stuff. But just for me, I don't, you know, that's how I broke my wrist. Just certain kinds of people out there that just have no yeah. common um, sense. 
but you one thing I would say is that you're coming off like kind of bold because <laughs> no I don't mean that in a put me way, in check but if we don't allow like the growth of our community community there's going to be a fall eventually yeah because I mean like companies like LSK and Dirt King all of them if we are if we're like don't like come to the desert like we don't want you you're stupid yeah. like those companies aren't going to make money because I mean sure like there's Tacomas with like Dirt King upper control arms and Kings that just stroll around the streets, but they all want to be a part. Like everyone wants to be yeah. a part of the same community, and that's gonna help us grow for the people that are actually like really into it. So I think it's a good and bad thing. I just think maybe we could make like the rules more known to people that want to start coming to the desert. Like, yeah. just don't be an idiot. Like, <laughs> don't leave your shit. <laughs> Like, follow the rules. It's not that hard. It's, so what? You got to slow down when you're going by the camp. It's just respect yeah. for one another. And don't get me wrong. I don't want to see growth. It's I, No, don't get me wrong. I don't not want to yeah. see growth. But it, like I said, it comes down to, like, There's you could give everybody a, a chance. Yeah. You know, like, you give everybody a chance. But if somebody's, like, you see, like, they're just not really getting it. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. it's like okay, it <laughs> yeah, okay, dude, maybe it's time for you to find a different hobby. You yeah, know? yeah. Because, like you said, yeah, there are... You know, there's younger kids like in high school that you know build their truck with the. <laughs> there's the kids in high school that go around with like you know like the build I had the OEM replacement build and like they want to learn to start getting into it, which again is good. I think it's like when you start to take on building your own vehicle, you get that slow entry into it and you learn everything and you learn to respect it. Mm-hmm. Versus the guys that go out and, like you said, somebody buys a fully linked Ranger on Offer Up or Facebook Marketplace, <laughs> and now it's like. They think, oh, I got this badass truck with all this power. Let me go fuck around and find out. Yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. I don't know. That That's just where I'm at. It's It was just a last-minute kind of flare-up or something yeah. of, of just this isn't sitting right with me. Mm-hmm. Let me put my two cents in on it and wanted to share it with everybody else. What do you and, guys think? Yeah, what, what, yeah <laughs> let me know. I'm over here literally like hopping on both sides of the... <laughs> I feel like it's a very broad topic that could be like... Talk about a trillion different things. Maybe yeah. Talk about trash, trails. And there's different variables too. Like I said, it could just be like if you talk about overland versus desert people, it's probably two completely different ball games of do we include everybody and do we gatekeep and whatnot. Like you can't gatekeep a desert, but trails, <laughs> yeah, there's probably people out there that know sick trails that they're not sharing with yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like he said, let us know what you guys think. Cause I'm, I'm, as you can see, I'm just hopping both sides of the fence. I don't really have like a solid one side or the other. It's just more so like conditional, I guess. Well, thanks for joining me. I don't think you're as nervous as you thought. I think once you start getting into it, it's fun. Yeah, yeah. I kind of want to do. I want to do more of these. Yeah, I'm down. I want to do. Uh, we should get like uh, just actual like equipment people. and not what I'm using right now. Yeah. You should I show them what we're using? Right now? <laughs> Say hi to Perry. Say hi, to Perry. Hi. Um, I had you guys set up on a ladder on top of movies with a ring light. So yeah. with no mic, we're using the phone as an external mic. So one thing I do think that we should do is you guys should comment down what you want us to talk about. Like, like something I would want to talk about personally is, is it worth building your truck to go faster over speed bumps? <laughs> but that's just me, you know? All right. Well, I've already taken you guys off. I already took you guys off the stand, but thank you guys so much for watching and again like he said comment down below what you guys think of this topic comment down below other things you want to see us discuss because like i said i'm gonna need to uh subsidize these two videos a week with some of these at home videos and i actually really enjoy doing them so thank you so much for watching we'll catch you guys in the next one